Hi guys, welcome back. Today we're going to be doing a closer look at It's a Bird. Uh, that's the name of the book, It's a Bird. And uh, this is by Stephen T. Siegel or Siegel um, and Teddy Christensen. Uh, we've got a comment at the bottom here, Spellbinding and Timely, uh, Grant Morrison, and this is published by Vertigo Comics, which is a division of DC. Uh, I am just going to read the basic premise on the back of the book because I find that my description isn't really telling enough. Um, so I'm going to read through this, we'll do a closer look, um, and then we'll come back and uh, have a kind of discussion on my kind of thoughts. Um, so it says here, um, Steve's professional life has never looked brighter. He's been offered the chance to chronicle the adventures of the world's first famous superhero, Superman. His personal life, though, has taken a turn for the worse. His father has gone missing, his mother is beside herself with worry, and a grim secret has come back to roost. A fatal genetic disease that threatens to destroy another generation of his family. In the world Steve writes about, salvation comes through displays of fantastic power. But in the real world, where not all diseases have cures, where the only Superman is two-dimensional ink on paper, who will come to save the day? Working with acclaimed painter Teddy Christensen, Sandman, House of Secrets, um, writer Stephen T. Seagal, Sandman, Mystery, Theatre and the Crusades, tells a semi-autobiographical story that explores the many meanings underpinning the icon of Superman, invoking the variety of styles, voices. It's a Bird is alternately deeply personal and wildly experimental, a powerful story about memory, family, loss and our need for heroes. So let's have a closer look at the book itself and then as I say we can come back and have a, a little bit of a discussion. See the book cover isn't in the greatest condition um, just because it did have a lot of stickers on it for the kind of price tags. I don't know why the shop covered it in reduction stickers. Um, but I've tried to do my best to kind of clean that up. So the front doesn't look too bad, the back does have a little bit scuffed up. Um, so we've got It's a Bird, and it looks like he's sketched out a bunch of other kind of titles he's kind of come up with. Um, very much him with all these kind of drone Superman lovers kind of behind him. Um, and he's trying to kind of figure out how he can kind of connect with that. Um, we've got various kind of pictures here that's from the art kind of inside. Um, yeah, kind of cool looking kind of wraparound sleeve. Um, we do have uh, some sort of information here if you guys want to slow that down and read that. And then as I say the creators here. The book itself is nice and simple. It's got just it's a bird and it's this nice kind of maroon type colour. Um, on the side it says it's a bird, we've got the craters and the vertigo and then just a plain back um, overall. As I say it feels almost like someone's sketchbook, the way the kind of book is overall, there's not really a finesse to it, um, it's just really kind of worn the show the kind of things but it's very deliberate as to as I say how they've kind of gone about that. You have this kind of commentary going on um, in the background, which is these kind of, uh, I guess, kind of pinkier boxes. Um, and then you have the, whatever the relevant story is at the time, is obviously the normal kind of speech bubbles. Um, I just love the, the typography and the, the design of the panels and things in this. Like every little detail matters, um, like making this S kind of look a little bit like Superman's logo and things. Um, as I say, there is a lot of different points where he's coming out with an idea, so you'll start seeing like the idea pages outside of his normal kind of life pages, if you like. There's a kryptonite one, um, and here's a kind of a, I'd say a costume one, um, so in sort of the different variants of what the costume potentially could have been. It's a great book, and it's something I think I would never have come across um, had I not kind of just stumbled on it in the shop. Because, um, as I say, this kind of art would typically put me off on a professional kind of finished book. Whereas, 
for what this is, this art fits perfectly, um, and I just, I love it. Um, and then at the end of the book, I don't know if we have any kind of extras overall, it just kind of ends off overall. Um, and then we've got a dedication to his Aunt Sarah, um, which apparently sort of passed away um, during the sort of writing of this book, so it's kind of dedicated to her. Now that we've had a look at the book, as I say, I just want to have a little bit of a, a discussion about it overall. This is the book that I totally stumbled across in Plan 9 one day, which is one of my local comic book stores. Um, as I say, I want to say I got it for less than a tenner, there was a whole bunch of stickers on it. I really enjoyed the premise of this book, not only in the art styles kind of chosen, um, but the whole kind of package as to how things kind of came together. Um, as it kind of says on the back of the book, this is kind of semi-autobiographical um, and it kind of compares the elements of superheroes um, on the page to what they could do in the real world. Um, you know, the challenges kind of come across people to kind of connect with things that maybe they can't find a way to kind of connect with. Um, and then general sort of, uh, sort of family worries and connections and things that go on on that level that you might not know is going on in the average person's kind of life. Um, it's a really deep story for the level um, that it's kind of written at. Um, you know, it doesn't sort of go in and overwhelm you with information, but it's got a lot of kind of underpinning meaning and the art really uplifts that kind of um, side kind of mo moments and kind of points and things um, where you might have a little bit of kind of a thought in your head or someone's saying like oh you know I'm thinking about maybe the Superman symbol and why they chose to use like red and yellow when you're just thinking of that it's not like a big thing but when you see it on the page and then it actually comes down and he, you can see what he's imagining the kind of page to look like and you can see different variants of like a Superman was wearing red or wearing yellow or wearing blue and why they done the combinations in the order that they did and maybe like any connotations that may or may not have been kind of taken from that it's a real eye-opener, not just on the character Superman, but on comics as a whole, about the decisions that are being made from every single panel. Um, you know, people forget when they're reading a comic book that every individual panel in that book is a piece of art. You know, some other artist gets paid for creating one picture, you know, and it's their work of art, you know, for like the entire freaking year, two years. You know, these guys, Every single panel, you know, we're talking hundreds of panels in a book, are planned out pieces of art. And they all have a story to tell, they all have depth, they all have style, they all have emotion to them. Um, and this is something that is, you know, becoming even more sort of prevalent in comics now as we're moving away from superheroes being the focus for companies like Image and they're kind of opening up to telling any and every story to the point where, you know, there's more comic books getting action for movies and TV shows than almost any other medium right now because they're pushing the boundaries. Comic books can do things within a budget that no other medium can. If you write a book you can't describe things well enough to get the information across. It's just written by imagination and they could describe everything, but if they overly describe it, they ruin the moment. If you make a movie, then the budget goes on it. And if you throw everything out as far as practical effects and go for CGI and make crazy effects that way, then you almost lose the moment by falsifying it. In a comic book, you hit that perfect middle ground where you can have any art style. You can have photographic art styles, you can have CGI art styles, you can have sketchbook art styles, you can have really emotional kind of like sketchy coloured kind of art like this is. Um, and it makes all the difference in that experience. It makes all the difference in how that story comes across, especially if it was a conscious decision of the artist that they went for for that book. Um, and this, as I say, is one of those books that it definitely was. Um, it's a great story. There's a couple of key points that stood out to me that I maybe want to just mention. So, the first thing is, 
This is very much written from the writer's perspective, as I say, in a semi-autobiographical kind of sense, as if he is the character in the kind of story. So, again, this book somewhat exists in itself, right? You know, the, the story of the book is the story of creating this book, in a way, right? So that's kind of interesting um, and really kind of cool. Um, very similar to, in a way, the way the Ex Machina um, is a story about the creation of itself, in a way, right? Outside of that, though, um, it's a story of family and dealing with disease and dealing with emotions there. Um, and um, the main disease they're dealing with is Huntington's disease. Um, and they talk about the different terminologies and how people don't like to talk about it and how people don't like to kind of bring up diseases in families and um, they kind of feel that they you know, shouldn't have had him and his brother um, as kind of kids had they known that this disease would kind of pass down in the family. Um, now this is something that hits home a little bit for me because um, I have family, um, friends, um, you know, even, um, as I say, my, my, my girlfriend, there's different things, um, both sort of, uh, sort of medical and otherwise, that there could have been decisions for either her or myself to have never been born. Um, you know, through different family um, kind of things, and there could be reasons for that not to have kind of happened. Um, for me, personally, um, as I say, I was born with some things that were not known. Um, I basically had the umbilical cord around my neck um, and my mum had to get an emergency caesarean. And then within that first week or so um, in the hospital, it was found that my own um, sort of intestines were knotted. Um, and I had to be taken away from my parents and have an emergency operation on myself um, in order to basically survive my original, you know, birth. Um, so I'm lucky to be here, guys. I'm lucky to be breathing and be doing anything that I'm doing, and I'm grateful for every day. Um, you know, I feel very much like he does, that, um, you know, it doesn't matter any of the kind of harshnesses that you've gone through any of the the pains and trials because any you know worthwhile moment that you had kind of cancels that you know if you got five good years out of your life and then died you still got five good years out of your life i appreciate your parents might feel guilty about that you know your family might feel guilty about that but you know from your perspective you know or at least from mine i would rather have had that than not um, and that's a big touching, as I say, moment in this book overall, um, which very much, you know, connected with myself. Um, outside of that, um, as I say, there are the um, kind of elements with him connecting with Superman as a character. And that's something, again, I can very much relate to. Uh, if you've seen any of my other kind of closer look videos recently, I'll have said that I didn't really connect with Big Blue. I felt that he was this perfect, you know, kind of character and couldn't really see a lot of reason to kind of connect with him. Um, more and more recently, um, I have um, connected in sort of the Rebirth runs, um, more so the action comics than anything else. And it's more from his moral drives and the risks that he takes than any of his kind of superpowers. Um, it's that whole idea, um, and it goes back to, I guess, the Nightwing theory for me, which is, you know, if you never jump, you'll never know if you can fly. You know, so... This has been an interesting book, guys. Um, it's definitely worth reading if you can get your hands on it. It's a deep, um, kind of, uh, very touching story. And although not 100% a hundred percent kind of autobiography um, is, as I say, autobiographical elements, um, and as I say, really, you know, touched me anyway as as a kind of reader. So I recommend you check it out, um, you know. But as I say, just be aware that it isn't going to be that typical uh, superhero book. More of uh, a, a commentary on the the kind of industry, on the character, Superman, and uh, just kind of life as a whole, really. Um, yeah. So, um, 
to leave on that kind of touching moment, thanks for watching guys. Um, I hope that you do subscribe and uh, come back to much more videos in the future. Um, share this video with your friends and I'll see you guys in the next one.